not just fundraising, but ethical fundraising. Hi, I'm Bill Stanjakevich. This is the first day from the Fundraising School. And today, we're exploring the important topic of ethics and fundraising by looking at Chapter 2 of Achieving Excellence in Fundraising, the fifth edition, The Commitment to Ethical Fundraising. I'm joined by the co-authors, Dr. Gene Temple, who is the Dean Emeritus of the Indiana University Lilly Family School Philanthropy, and his colleague, Anne Bergeron, who has a long career in the cultural sector in philanthropy, and she has brought her practical experience along with her scholarship to write about this important topic of ethics and fundraising. And Gene, you've been part of this textbook for now all five editions, and one difference this time around is that the chapter on ethics has been moved to the front of the book. Why? Well, Bill, uh, thank you for asking that question. And, and as you said, I've been involved in all five editions of Achieving Excellence in Fundraising. And the ethics chapter has always been in the back of the book, along with the legal chapter, uh, as a kind of afterthought uh, to, the, to the development of the text. And, and in, in this particular edition, we thought we'd be more deliberate about uh, planning a kind of foundational um, platform from which fundraisers can, and anyone who reads or uses the text, can approach the technical aspects of fundraising that will, that will follow. So the, the ethics chapter is new. Anne and I uh, approach this ethics chapter in an entirely new way. I think you'll find it a, um, a much better uh, chapter for approaching, uh, approaching ethics. And along with the other chapters, the other four chapters in this section, uh, I'll be able to approach the, um, the text that, you, that follows in a much more deliberate, uh, much more um, critical, and, um, and, a, and a much more um, um, a professional way in thinking about the, the text that follows. And Gene, why are ethics especially important for fundraising? Ethics can apply to all sorts of professions, all sorts of walks of life. What is unique to the topic of ethics in the context of fundraising? Well, the, uh, one, one aspect of it uh, that's really important is that fundraiser, fundraisers are approaching people with the, with the possibility of, of, of giving money to something that for which the fundraiser is only an agent. And uh, it's, it's important that the, uh, fun, that the donor uh, have trust in not only the fundraiser, but the cause that the fundraiser, uh, the fundraiser uh, represents. And often it's the fundraiser who is the kind of ethical voice for the entire nonprofit organization. And although there are codes for other aspects of the professional staffs in fundraising organizations in, in nonprofit organizations, it's often the fundraiser who is the ethical voice right. uh, when it comes to things like tainted money, when it comes to things like conflict of interest, when it comes to things like uh, donor intent, those kinds of things. So we, we think fundraisers need to practice, uh, need to become ethic, ethical, um, uh, the, the voice of ethics in an organization. They are boundary spanners. They represent uh, the donor to the organization. They represent the organization to the donor and they are in the middle of that. Um, there's a lot of research that shows the, 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 the tension that exists when one plays a boundary spanning role and a solid uh, understanding and commitment to ethics is really important to functioning in that role. And as fundraisers develop relationships with their donors, they get to know their donors very well, and they learn about their philanthropic values and their philanthropic motivations, and really start developing a deep professional relationship with the donor. And, and that also can lead to many types of different ethical dilemmas. And, and you've encountered this in your work in the cultural sector, and you provided us with a framework to address these ethical dilemmas. What will our readers see when they encounter chapter two in this framework for dealing with ethical dilemmas? Well, you know, I came to the Lilly Family School specifically to study this topic because over the course of my career, I just, you know, too often saw ethical considerations not being addressed in order for gifts to be closed, and the demands of these you know, very large capital campaigns to be satisfied without actually addressing some of the concerns that some, uh, some potential gifts raise within an organization. And some of those are around ethical dilemmas where there's no one right way to make a decision 
right? It has to be right for the organization or it has to be right for the, the beneficiaries or it has to be right for the donor. Um, and so we did a lot of research to find out, find a, a really good framework for helping fundraisers and uh, uh, organizational leaders go through a process of determining how to make the right decision for your organization. So you'll find that in the book. And, and then that points to an important aspect of ethical fundraising. We're not talking about something that's obviously right and obviously wrong. That would, we would need a chapter in a book if that were the case. It's often between a couple or more than a couple, many options, all of which could be correct, right? So that's the kind of tension that the fundraiser is living within. Well, this is, you know, what Jean talks about, you know, um, ethical practice is more than a series of do's and don'ts. It's not just a matter of memorizing, I need to do this in this situation and that in that situation. It's really, it's more a way of life. It's a set of personal and professional values. It's a practice. And the more you do it, it's just like exercise. You build ethical muscle and you learn the right way to act in a situation. And Gene, one of those weights we can lift consistently to build that ethical muscle that Ann just talked about is the Donor Bill of Rights. And the Donor Bill of Rights has been consistent throughout achieving excellence in fundraising and remains foundational uh, in this edition as well. Help our audience understand the Donor Bill of Rights. Well, Bill, the, um, the, the emphasis in fundraising and in organizations uh, Involvement in in fundraising is has been a folk has been has led to a focus on understanding donors, practicing what uh, practicing good stewardship of donor resources, uh, trying to understand donor values, um, and uh, the Bill of Rights is a, a was an extension of that. It was approved, um, you know, thirty years ago probably. I've gotten the exact date, but but to give uh, organizations. Uh, a tool by which they could judge their own relationships to donors, and so it 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 states things like um, like the like a donor has a right to ex, to access to an organization's financial reports, that a donor has uh, you know a right to some assurance that funds will be used uh, in a way in which the donor intended. And so those those things are they're, they're good ethical uh, you know they're good ethical props as well like Ann said so there are this is where you get into the do's and the don'ts as opposed to uh, the dilemmas that Ann was talking about where there are two competing rights and it's difficult uh, difficult to make a decision here we have an obligation this is a statement of obligation uh, to um, to help the to to for for our commitment to what the donor's about. But I think um, thanks to the help of Ann and a friend of mine who's a philosophy professor, um, the, org the chapter now has another rich way of looking at ethical decision-making. And so we've moved from the donor bill of rights uh, to a look at the organization or beneficiary bill of rights. And I think it's a, it's a whole new way of looking at ethics in this chapter is, is, is as far as I know, the first time we're really taking a look at that aspect of fundraising as well. The entire fifth edition of Achieving Excellence in Fundraising, the authors were given several instructions. One is use research-based, evidence-based content uh, from your area of expertise in ways that could be translated and applied by fundraising professionals and practitioners. Second of all, to include material about how to respond to a crisis with the COVID-19 health crisis being foundational for that, but writing that in an evergreen way for not just that, but any crisis that might come along. And each chapter is written through the lens of social justice. And social justice has this power dynamic. And, and if we just stop with the donor bill of rights, we're only looking at the people of means who are making a donation. And as Jeet just mentioned, this chapter importantly includes the beneficiary bill of rights, this you know, understanding of community-based philanthropy, reminding us that fundraising and philanthropy are a two-way relationship, not just for the donor and not just for the nonprofit organization, but for the people in the cause benefiting from the nonprofit and the cause, the, the people who are, you know, having a voice into how this cause should be fulfilled. Tell us more now about this Beneficiary Bill of Rights, a new addition to this uh, chapter on ethics and achieving excellence in fundraising. 
Well, it really came out of, you know, the emphasis on social justice work that is permeating the nonprofit sector, actually all sectors of society today. And it's come out of um, the work that has been done by a group of people in Seattle um, that they, um, they generated a, a guide called community centric fundraising. And it's really about not necessarily not abandoning donor centric fundraising because that remains vital to, to um, this work, but embracing those that are um, the focus of the philanthropic investment. And it's giving them agency and a seat at the table in the decision-making process so that we're assured that the monies that are being invested to help a particular community or a particular cause are, is, are is exactly what that community wants and needs in order to move itself forward including the voice of the recipient, the recipient who passes the zip code test. They are the true expert of this cause because they are living this particular situation that the nonprofit organization is addressing and ensuring that that voice is included in all of the nonprofits work, including in their fundraising planning and fundraising execution. A commitment so, to, yes, Anne, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, we've developed the beneficiary bill of rights as a corollary to the donor bill of rights. And so that they work um, in an integrated way uh, and are, are, are co-supporting. It's a, a power sharing dynamic, if you will. Yes, it's a both and. It again demonstrates that fundraising is not transactional one way from the donor to the nonprofit, but transformational with the donor, the nonprofit and the beneficiary all in this win-win-win relationship. Right. And this chapter, a commitment to ethical fundraising uh, calls attention to that important balance while also providing a framework for addressing our ethical dilemmas that we face while developing these close relationships with our donors and our program beneficiaries. The fifth edition of Achieving Excellence in Fundraising is now available uh, and information from this book is informing the coursework of the fundraising school more than ever before. Our public courses, which are in person in more and more US cities, our online coursework will continue to remain strong in both a recorded so-called asynchronous format and our live virtual format as well. We have custom training that can come straight to you, your nonprofit, your region, your association, anywhere in the United States and anywhere across the world. We have quarterly webinars and of course these free podcasts. All of this information about achieving excellence in fundraising and the fundraising school are available on our website at philanthropy.iupui.edu forward slash the fundraising school. So grateful to our guests today, Dr. Jean Temple and Ann Bergeron. Our producers today are Jennifer Boffman and Mike Anthony. I'm Bill Stanjakevich, and now you are now more fully informed on this first day from the fundraising school. Mm -hmm.